Now, welcome back. We are going to talk about memory management and uh, that problem in, in software security. So this will be a, a short overview of the problems uh, that can occur. So first we'll uh, uh, revise how memory is structured and how it's usually used, uh, particularly from, from a, a C perspective, and then, then we'll look at uh, buffer overruns. Uh, and we'll, we'll finalize on a note that this is possible also in, in other languages. So the memory uh, of a, a process, so that is a, a, an executing uh, program, uh, looks something like this. Uh, so we have we have some memory which is reserved for for the kernel, so the operating system, and then the the process uh, has a, a large uh, space here, uh, which it can can use to uh, store its data. So, for instance, down here we have uh, code and data that was available in the in the executable file. So when the operating system starts the execution and uh, turns uh, loads this program into memory to start executing it as a process, uh, then it loads the executable file uh, into some memory region down here. And uh, this is uh, code and its data, so like text strings that are available in the program and so on. Um, so data that that shouldn't be be executed, uh, and then you have uh, two things. So it's dynamic memory that's used while executing the program. So the heap uh, is used to allocate uh, memory uh, that is needed. So for instance, if the program needs to read a picture from from the hard drive, for instance, it needs to allocate. Uh, memory and then uh, read the, that file and write it into memory. So then it allocates some memory uh, on the heap and reads the file there. Uh, and uh, then it can keep it in memory and, and work with it. Now on the on the other uh, side here uh, is the, the stack. And this one is used to organize uh, the program in, in running. So for instance, when you make function calls, uh, you use the stack to keep track of which function you were in and where you went. Uh, and uh, when the function finishes, where it should return. So all this is stored on the stack uh, to help the, the program uh, run properly. And so, somewhere here in the middle, uh, we add memory for, for shared uh, libraries and stuff like that. Now, uh, this memory region is is rather large. You see here, it starts at zero down here, and then it's a reasonably large number here and a much larger number up here. Uh, so, so it's quite some space that is available here uh, to the program. So it's not it's not using everything, and and maybe the physical memory of the computer system doesn't even fit, uh, wouldn't fit all of this if uh, the program filled it. Uh, so it's a large area, but it's, it's, uh, it's a virtual uh, memory that the, the program has access to. And uh, that there are techniques to, to, to have this much memory uh, using the hard drive if you don't have enough uh, physical memory. Uh, but that's not uh, our concern at the moment. Uh, our concern is how uh, this uh, memory can be exploited. Particularly, we will look at the stack uh, in the, the coming example. So buffer overruns uh, are uh, a major problem, uh, perhaps uh, one of the most famous problems, I'd say, uh, from computer security. So when, when a normal, normal person who is not an expert in computer science uh, thinks about hacking, it's uh, something along the lines of buffer overruns that they are thinking about. Uh, and uh, there are stack overruns, heap overruns, uh, and uh, we will look at a stack overrun. Uh, and uh, 
the reason these uh, work is because yeah the programs use variables uh, to store uh, things either on the stack or on the heap and uh, you can actually trick the computer system to execute uh, these parts uh, so we consider the the following program uh, so it's a login function here and the idea is that it uh, returns uh, something to indicate success or failure uh, and it has the correct password which is uh, swordfish and it has a uh, user uh, it has some space reserved for uh, storing the password the user enters and it uh, prints a user password uh, to let the user know that it should enter the password and then it simply reads the password as a string and stores it in uh, the user password variable and then we uh, check if uh, the correct password is equal to the user password uh, to see if uh, they are equal or not and if they are equal we return zero uh, indicating that uh, this worked uh, Otherwise, we return one to indicate that uh, it failed. Now, uh, this uh, program uh, can be susceptible to, to several bugs, I'd say, but we will look at, at one of them. So if we get back the, the memory structure here again and the program that we just looked at, so now we want to see what happens when we uh, execute this program. So the first thing that uh, happens when we call this function is that uh, some things will be put on the stack. Uh, so the stack is, is this area. Now if we, if we have a, a representation of the stack here, uh, the things that, that will happen, so we see that the stack is growing uh, downwards here. So we will uh, so we'll have the stack uh, represented here so we can, we can see the details. Now what happens when we start executing this function is that we, it's called from somewhere in the code and uh, that is uh, executing at some address in memory. So the first thing that happens is that that return address is uh, written uh, to the stack. So this is an address where we want to return after this function uh, finishes execution. Uh, so that's written first. Uh, so we need, uh, so once uh, the, the function here terminates, uh, either uh, this or this, it will return to, to this address. The second thing that's uh, put on the stack is any arguments to the function. Uh, and this function doesn't take any arguments, so nothing is written, so uh, very simple. Now, the tricky thing here is that we, we notice that the stack is growing in this direction, which means that addresses uh, are higher here in the beginning of the stack and lower uh, here. This means that uh, when we actually write uh, the, the text string swordfish here, uh, we sort of write it backwards. Uh, so we allocate uh, space uh, for, for these uh, byte arrays. So we, we don't notice uh, any, any of these uh, that, uh, that is written backwards when we're writing the program, but that's actually uh, part of the trick here. So we have a uh, swordfish and then we have to write it backwards here. Uh, and that's, that's the, that's the reason uh, just because the, the stack starts at the, the high address and grows to the lower. So here is the lower address and here's the higher address. So 
to start at writing at byte one and writing up to byte 10, for instance, then byte one is here and it goes up to, to byte 10 here. So the return address is higher. So we're reading bottom up here. Uh, and this, uh, this uh, memory region here that I marked is the, the user password uh, variable. Uh, so this one. Now what happens when we execute this program is that whatever the user types in here will be written here. So if you write the password uh, pwd, it will be written like this. And this is the important thing here uh, that uh, we write in this direction and uh, then follows this. So if we can uh, write more characters than actually intended, uh, then we can do some, uh, some mean things. So we see here that we have 16 characters in total. Uh, so we write a few more here. Uh, and once we have written more than, than uh, 16 characters here, so once we reach the end, it will uh, simply continue here. So uh, we write G, H, and uh, P, Q, and just some random garbage here, J, uh, A, D, A, F, and w uh, we can write over this text string uh, so this is uh, of course not good so now we now we just change the password here uh, but that's not our main concern actually what is uh, more interesting is that if we continue to writing even further uh, then we can start writing up here too. So say that we just write uh, a bunch of A's here. Then we can overwrite the uh, return address too. So the, the trick of a buffer overrun, uh, in most cases when this happens, uh, the program crashes, so you have probably, if you, if you ever uh, tried to do programming in C or C++, uh, you might have encountered one of these memory errors where you uh, overwrite the stack and, and corrupt uh, the memory and the program crashes. Now the trick here to, to, uh, to a stack overrun is that you write this, but instead of writing uh, garbage up here, uh, you write another valid return address. Uh, and if you're really, really cunning, uh, then what you enter here as the, the password uh, will not be a text string, but actually executable code. And uh, what you can do then is to try to figure out what is the address, uh, what is the address to, to this uh, byte here. And then you enter uh, that address uh, up here. So you get uh, the address uh, to the start uh, of, the, of the memory region. So this means that uh, once you have uh, overwritten this part like this, so that's done in this, this line here, then we come to the comparison and we don't care about what the comparison will will say. Most likely it will uh, say that they are not uh, equal. But the interesting thing happens when we get to the return here, because when we ha go to the return, uh, the program will, will remove uh, these things uh, from, the, from the stack and it will read the return address from here again. And uh, then it will continue execution in that spot. So if we have entered program code here, so uh, machine code compiled, uh, then uh, this program, this function, once it hits return here, it will not return to where it was executing before, but it will actually 
uh, move execution to here and start executing the code that you've just entered. Uh, so this means that you have managed to trick this uh, program or this process into running uh, code that you supplied. Now, if this is a login program uh, such as this one, it will uh, run with some higher privileges. Uh, so you will get uh, quite some privileges uh, in this system if you manage to uh, execute your own code here. So this means that you can make the, uh, this system execute code that you chose. In most cases, what you want to do is to uh, let the code you enter here uh, spawn a, a shell so that you can continue executing arbitrary code that you like. Uh, so you, you use this as a bootstrap uh, to, to get hold, uh, uh, to get a foothold in a system. Uh, so this is the, the idea of uh, stack overruns. Of course, there are some uh, mitigations in place, but uh, there are uh, ways around them. Uh, and uh, whenever people find ways around them, uh, we add other mitigations and then people find uh, ways around them. Uh, so it's a continuous process like this. So, so nowadays it's not as simple as doing only this, but... Uh, the the idea is uh, is this now uh, the example here is is from from C uh, but uh, there are problems in object oriented languages too which doesn't do uh, its own memory management to to the same extent as, as C does uh, but in these cases, there are ways to trick the system to point to a different memory location than, than it actually uh, should. Uh, so one can uh, trick the system to believe that a memory region is of a different type than it actually is. So you can change, uh, change the contents of the memory in ways that, uh, that you weren't supposed to. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not as easy to... to Get a get a simple example out of them, but uh, but it's it's fully possible. Now that was everything for this time. Uh, thanks a lot.